Okay. Shall we? Welcome to this regularly scheduled December 14th, 2023 City Council meeting. May we have a roll call? Councilmember Brooks? Here. Councilmember Clark? Here. Councilmember Peterson? Here. Vice Mayor Brown? Here. And Mayor Kaiser? Here. Uh, we can go out to public comment. Seeing none, we will adjourn for closed session and be back at 6 p.m. Good evening. Welcome to our regularly scheduled city council meeting. This is December 14th, 2023. May we have a roll call? Councilmember Brooks? Here. Councilmember Clark? Here. Councilmember Peterson? Here. Vice Mayor Brown? Here. And Mayor Kaiser? Here. Would you all please join in the Pledge of Allegiance? to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Do we have any additions to the, or deletions to the agenda? <laughs> Staff has no changes to the agenda this evening. Thank you. And any report on closed session? <laughs> the City Council reviewed the items on the closed session agenda, met with their labor negotiator, and took no reportable action. Great, thank you. Additional materials? Staff did receive additional materials to tonight's agenda. Two emails were received related to item 8A. Two emails and a staff memorandum were received related to item 8B. And a staff memorandum was received related to item 8C. All materials are available on the online agenda packet in the back of the room for the public's review and were distributed to the City Council in advance of tonight's meeting. Great, thank you. Does seem like we have a semi-full house tonight. May I get a show of hands of who will be speaking during public comment? Okay, great. Um, just be mindful that it is three minutes. Our City Clerk will be diligent on that time frame. So um, we can go ahead with Communications from the public. Who would like to come up first? Good evening, Mayor, Council, Staff. I'm Carrie from the Capitola Soquel Chamber of Commerce, and I'm excited to announce that we're bringing back our Capitola Soquel Chamber Community Awards Gala. And so I'm just asking you guys to save the date and mark your calendars for Friday, March 15th at the Hotel Paradox. And we are excited to celebrate the amazing businesses and people that we have in our community. And it wouldn't be a party without you. So we'd love to have you come and celebrate our shining stars and our local legends. Um, the chamber office is going to be closed the week of Christmas and New Year's. So the week of January 8th, we're going to be releasing our nomination form. So be looking for that. And again, save the date, March 15th. And thank you for all you do for Capitola and for our community and for your support of the Chamber of Commerce. Thank you. Thank you. Gary Richard Arnold, uh, mayors, uh, city council people. Um, I believe you've uh, betrayed the people and are oath to the Constitution. Uh, uh, Federal Constitution guarantees a Republican form of government, um, even in the, in the states. Uh, you have, uh, you belong to the California League of Cities, uh, which by the way, I've got proof right here, uh, where they have lobbied to prevent a, a, a more secret uh, expose of, uh, to reinforce the Brown Act that prevents secrecy and skullduggery. And uh, the mayor or the city manager uh, down in uh, Orange County recommended to the council to take a position against the anti-secrecy bill. And um, anyway, uh, he placed it on the agenda as uh, number three legislative report number 86-08. And every single council member voted for it. The people had no idea what was going on. And I'm sure you don't know that the founder of the California League of Cities was a member of the secret Bohemian Grove that's into the all-cult 
cremation of children, cremation of care, etc. cetera. Um, <clears throat> the last meeting I was at, I went over to the attorney and the city manager and <clears throat> said that I wanted to bring something off the agenda. And um, <clears throat> I didn't know, and I think it was deliberate because the recording that evening was also somehow flawed. It didn't come out. Uh, another time I came in when you were in your five o'clock meeting and there was nobody here. And I went up and petitioning my government, I put a book at every one of the city council person's place and then one at the city uh, clerk's. Um, the city manager came in and a policeman came up to me and said, what am I going to say when I was standing, when I was, you know, going to come up here and, and speak? And I said, that's none of your business. You have police officers telling people, asking them what they're going to do. And he handcuffed me and took me away. This place is outrageous. The head, the present head of the Board of Supervisors, uh, Zach Friend, his two former employers were the Red, Chi or, or, or Red Chinese lobbyist. Uh, he, together with another supervisor, threatened Freedom Forum. They held a political uh, events where you, people could come and debate each other when you run for office. And uh, he threatened you, the two granges of their opinions, lives sir? and their property. This we have other speakers. Is really bad. Thank you. Hey everyone, I am really, really bad at public speaking, so we're all going to have to deal with that. I'd like to talk about one of the most dangerous intersections in Capitola. Uh, this is the intersection of Capitola Ave and Stockton Avenue. So you have the real estate office, the market, the psychic, and the shoe store. Uh, my understanding of California law is that when the daylighting law takes effect January 1st, the parking spot right in front of the psychic will no longer comply to the new laws. And it's a really dangerous intersection in that it's a diagonal. Uh, if you see the cars parked there, it's very hard to see people walking from that direction. And because it's really more of a T there because of how Stockton goes, your focus is very much not on that corner where people are crossing. So since the law is going to change anyway in a couple of weeks, uh, I wonder if we can start the process of getting rid of that parking spot and maybe look into all the other spots that uh, daylighting could improve this public safety in our community for. So uh, thanks, guys. I appreciate it. Thank you. I'll sign in, but uh, my name is still James Ewing Whitman. I haven't been here in a while. It's amazing, the traffic in this community. I was blown away. I took side streets from Mission and Bay, and it took less than a half hour to get here. Got here early enough to have a very pleasant conversation with two gentlemen that wear uniforms in this city. We were laughing a lot. So there's so much stuff going on that the citizens, I don't know, maybe they just kind of ignore. I don't really know why. Um, a friend sent me a kind of a gift program that I was watching before I was here. It's a film that was done in 1967 in Palo Alto High School I actually went to. It's called The Wave. The teacher was teaching about what Hitler was able to do, and the students just couldn't believe how the citizens in Germany just went along with it. So he kind of created this really simple process, procedure that it only took a few weeks for the kids to get really indoctrinated in a way that they were really quite swayed. And so kind of towards the end, there was a presentation and um, it turns out that he was training them to follow Hitler and the students just couldn't believe how easily they had been beguiled. Now, I think there's a lot of beguiling going on. You know, I spent some time at the supervisors meeting on Tuesday. I don't remember the exact times, but after listening to some individuals that were so promoting the genocide that's going on now by the government that controls Israel. There were a lot of people in there were clapping and stuff, and I was so I was moved enough to actually say boo. 
in a pretty loud voice for several seconds. I think that's it. I don't remember the time. But it was recorded, and it was just kind of fascinating what people seem to ignore. Now, I've spoken here before about this council. You guys were all elected by the people that live in the city of Capitola, but this is a charter city, just as is Scotts Valley, just as is Santa Cruz, just as the county is of Santa Cruz, and that's controlled by the city and county managers that don't necessarily have the interests of the citizens. They don't have the interests of the citizens. So it's just kind of fascinating. I've lived here since 1996. I used to live within a mile of this location. I'll be working there all winter, you know, starting hopefully in a couple of weeks. I can't believe that the project's been delayed for basically a year. You know, they're cutting down trees all over the place, but they, they, well, I think trees are important. So anyway, it's just interesting how beguiling things are going on, and it's quite an interesting time to be a human being and actually to, to try to say something that reaches people rather than having their eyes glazed over. So thank you. Thank you. Hello, my name is Anna Edwards, and I'm the, um, the Elderly and Disabled Transportation Advisory Committee from the Santa Cruz County Regional Transportation Commission. Okay, it's kind of, <laughs> yeah, we call it D&D TAC, <clears throat> the RTC. And I, in this part, I just want to say that I have enjoyed being at the Zoom meetings where I can be home and still of my family things that are going on. I I understand what happened, but I hope we figure out a way to have a Zoom with your public comments. That's all I need. Thank you. Thank you. Any other public? Okay. My name is Adrian West. I'm the daughter of Deborah Town, who was killed in a crosswalk recently on Bay Avenue. Um, I wanted to come here and ask all of you after tonight's meeting, go drive by the intersection of um, Bay Avenue and Hill Street and the Crossroads Loop and see how dark it is there at this time of night. Mom was walking it. 8 15 in the evening so you can imagine how much darker and harder to see the crosswalk um in 2022 someone died after being struck in the intersection of bay avenue and hill street some noise was made about how dangerous the intersection at bay and hill is from fire captain way back when, 20 years ago. And still no changes have been made. And no changes have been made after my mom's accident. I ask you this question, why just outside the police department there are flashing stop signs with yellow reflectors on the bars of those stop signs or the poles? And why we can't install those quickly? Explain to me why it's okay to keep waiting to do anything to help the public feel safe walking there. And explain to me why you can't have the crosswalks repainted, specifically the one where my mom was struck. You can almost not see it, even in daylight. And why the street lights are not protecting the people. They are faded and yellow, while the PD has lights that are bright like daylight, like the sun shining in the sky. Explain to me why you are all waiting to make any change to help keep people safe. Thank you. Thank you. So I took my mother-in-law to Costco last night. She was hit by a car, and 
you know, a car was backing up, and she's still afraid. This has been over a year. And we got 50 tickets the other day. Why don't we do that more? What, what are the police, what are they being, are they being trained? They're too busy. I know there's a lot more paperwork and training these days with who knows what. I, I kind of know because I work for the government. I know some. But, I mean, what is your workload? Because when I was a kid, you know, Wharf Road had a, there's still a turnout there where they can give tickets. There's nobody there. And there's got to be places like the other day when you gave tickets, 51 of them. And, and so, I know, I'm not trying to diss the police. Do you need money? You got a full amount of people right now, I'm told. But what are they doing? Is there gang? Is there drugs? I, I don't know. Those are the questions. But they're not giving out tickets. And I think that would make people aware of what capital is about. It was always this way, safe. We're proud of capital. I live in Soquel. We get a little spillover from you guys. We love it. So... I just have a lot of confusion and questions about you guys. You know, we, we're here for you, and we just want to know why. Why is this going on? And yes, there's no plan out there. There's no paint. We got fifty thousand dollars for a planner. You know, um, I, I don't get it. So I'd say more, but you know, I just would hope to get some uh, answers someday. Thank you. Thank you. Are there other members wishing to speak? All right, I'm not seeing any. So we can take this back to staff. Do we have any comments? Staff has no comments this evening. Anything from council? Okay. Uh, that'll take us to item seven, which is consent. So all of these items um, will be enacted with one motion in the form listed below. No separate discussion unless somebody on council wishes to pull an item. I'll move approval of consent. I'll second it. We have a motion and a second. May we have a roll call, please? Councilmember Brooks? Aye. Councilmember Clark? Aye. Councilmember Peterson? Aye. Vice Mayor Brown? Aye. And Mayor Kaiser. Aye, thank you, passes unanimously. We'll take us to eight, which is general government this evening. Item 8A, Bay Avenue and Hill Street traffic safety update from Ms. Kong. Good evening, Mayor and Council members, just waiting for the presentation to be pulled up. All right, so my first item this evening is the update on the Bay Hill Traffic Safety Project. So just a slight bit of background on this project. Uh, Bay Avenue is an arterial roadway that goes from Highway 1 down towards the village in the city of Capitola. There are documented issues with pedestrian safety. Uh, there's congestion during peak hours. It is a main uh, route to the neighborhoods, but also to the middle school on Monterey Avenue. And to that effect, the council allocated 50,000 budget $50,000 in the fiscal year 23-24 budget to address some of these issues in the intersection. Next slide, please. Um, so this is the timeline that was uh, included in your staff report, uh, just briefly, because there's more detail in uh, uh, the slides. Um, there was a presentation of the options to city council back in September of this year, um, an ad hoc committee was formed uh, that consists of council members Clark in Peterson, a community meeting was held in November uh, to discuss both uh, this item and then also the traffic fatality uh, just north of this intersection. Um, staff plans on doing more targeted outreach and design refinement before coming back to council on this project later in the year. Uh, next slide, please. Um, so again, there's an ad hoc subcommittee for this project. There was a community meeting on November 29th that was uh, widely attended by the public. There was a lot of really good feedback, a lot of concerns about this intersection and the uh, Bay Avenue corridor in general. Um, a lot of really good feedback. Uh, staff intends on later this month and into January getting a targeted input from the adjacent businesses, the large shopping center and other commercial businesses in that intersection. Then also the senior housing on Bay Avenue, which are frequent users and concerned citizens of this intersection. Slide, please. Um, so that is to uh, inform our quick build project uh, to refine the design based on community input to bring back to, for council consideration in late January or early February of next year. 
with the intention of constructing the quick build project, something similar to what is displayed here. Again, refined on community ad hoc and uh, the input of the adjacent property owners for construction in spring of 2024. It's estimated that that construction budget of $50,000 should cover the execution of that project. Um, the intent of a quick build project is to temporarily have some adjustments to the intersection and then evaluate them over 12 to 24 months to see what kind of permanent uh, improvements would be made. Next slide. And Tandem staff is proposing to um, initiate a corridor study this in the next com coming months. Um, it would evaluate Bay Avenue from the highway um, exit all the way down to Capitola Avenue and Bay Avenue. Um, which is where we have talked about a roundabout in the future, potentially. Um, we are looking for sustainable long-term improvements, uh, both for pet and bike usage, and also for traffic circulation in the area. Uh, next slide, please. And the estimated cost of this study is approximately $50,000. There's a significant amount of funding left in the roundabout design project that was intended for education and outreach. That is very much what this would also cover is education and outreach to the public, as well as the analysis of a corridor study. And then future funding for construction of any of the identified improvements would really be based on the outcomes of that study and the uh, council and community input. Um, so again, there is the quick build timeline as described in the staff report and the timeline for a long-term corridor study, and I'm available for any feedback or questions you may have. Thank you. Council questions? Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jessica, and thanks for bringing this back to us. Um, I have a couple questions. You mentioned that the report coming back to us after the quick build um, occurs, uh, it'll come back to us for, for review. Um, the question is, will the quick build study include like lights and options like that above and beyond kind of what's happening on the roads themselves for the quick build yeah like when we look at i guess let me let me start with you know there's concern about it just being dark at night and mm -hmm. like we can't have flashly lights i can't remember the purpose of that but when it comes back to us will there be other lighting options included in this um in the outcomes of this report. Yes, like the lighted, like stop signs, like yeah. the, the common, yes, that would be an option for a quick build project. That's something that is easily implementable. Mm -hmm. um, something like a traffic signal wouldn't be part of a quick build project, right? Or like additional lighting that we'd have to get PG&E to install, but something like lighting on a stop sign would be something that we could do as part of the quick build project. And is there anything in this quick build occurring, you know, in, when we put it in, that's going to address the immediate issues of safety and crossing. Um, does it help? How does it help? Those are my questions. Yes, the intent is to shorten crossing distances. So to do some height of road diet where you adjust the lanes, where the lanes are either shorter or you remove one altogether that adjusts the crosswalk. So it's a shorter distance, less exposure of pedestrians to vehicles. Okay, um, but there will there will only be one change, one smaller lane occurring in this quick build and then we review it, or will there be changes in length? I, and I'm asking because I'm worried that it would be confusing to the community of like, oh, it looks different this week, and in two months it looks different, and, you know, later on. And you mentioned outreach. So I'm just trying to connect all those dots. Sure. So the intention of the quick build, one, is it hasn't been fully designed yet. We're still doing that community outreach to the senior housing, the, the out, targeted outreach to the business owners. So that, that design is still in flux, and that's what's going to be brought back to you at the beginning of next year. Once we get your blessing and we implement that, that those changes would be in place for 12 to 24 months. I see. So we can ask for that input in that design. Um, and then we can, prior, can, we can then prioritize pedestrian safety rather than how fast cars can make it through and traffic and such. Is that true? Yes. Those are considerations and definitely trade-offs to make in different designs. Yeah. Okay, great. Um, how would one become involved in... What's the outreach going to look like for people to participate who may not be part of those groups, like the senior center, who want to give input during those meetings? So we did have the community meeting last month, and this will come back to council, so that's always an opportunity for public input. At this time, we didn't um, anticipate doing another general community meeting, though that is something, if directed, that we could add. But if somebody did, now that they might understand better the quick build, <laughs> and now they can most certainly email any of us or you to, to add um, yes. input. Okay, thank you. 
one point of clarification, I'm not sure if that was clear. We will be doing targeted outreach to the 750 Bay residents. So the stop signs and the lighting being a part of the quick build project, is there any reason that we couldn't put lighted stop signs in quicker than the quick build project? Um, it's just a matter of ordering them. And what's, what's the estimated cost for something like that? Less than $10,000 for all four of them, but I couldn't give you an exact quote off the top of my head. Okay. Okay. Thank you. I'd definitely be interested in pursuing that to see if we can get those lighted stop signs prior to the quick build, because I think the quick build purpose of that is a broader scope and it's, it's a much more complicated project. I think in the meantime, it would be reasonable to get the lighted stop signs and the reflectors on the poles. Is I think those are pretty negligible costs and could be probably implemented pretty quickly. I think we're having a budget, like first meeting in the year, aren't we having a budget overview? Our budget overview, I think, is scheduled for early February. So this project, our goal is to bring it back on January 24th, but it may slip to February 8th. just depends on how quickly we can schedule the outreach. So... But there could be, like, in the first January meeting, potentially at least an estimate of the cost and how, how fast it would, just information. I think even informational for us would be really helpful to find out how much would these cost, how fast would it take for them to be delivered, how fast would it take for them to be installed. I just think the more information, the better right now. Um, would that be possible? We can do that the first meeting of January, or you can bundle it with a quick build kind of project presentation. We'd have a full project budget, timeline kind of the decision points, the results of our feed community feedback. I think the sooner the better on, on anything that we can do quicker than the quick build. If the, that's the council's consensus, we don't have to bring it back in January. We can, we have budget and you could give us direction this evening to proceed with the flashy stoplights, stop signs, right? Yes. Yeah. Should I motion for There'd that? There'd be two. I think we need four. Be, well, it would be ideal to do four. You want this, it, they're all in one intersection. You would want the same treatment on all of your signage. On the Bay Avenue. So there's two in each direction on Bay Avenue. I'm sorry, that would make it six. You're right, there's two stop signs on each approach of Bay Avenue. So six signs total. So, so I do think that it would be a good idea to work at the speed of safety instead of the speed of government and uh, doing something like that is positive. As long as we can incorporate it with our overall plan, I think it's a great idea. Yes. Um, how would that incorporate with the quick build? You know, what is that? I mean, it's coming back January 28th. Does that confuse the process, make it more challenging to follow through on other items or to get your complete honesty was it going to be at the end of the day that we were going to go with flashy lights anyways? You know what I mean? So I'd say the only potential negative is that with the quick build, if we design it where we don't need that many stop signs in one intersection going the same direction, we might remove one. Mm -hmm. That would be the only consideration off the top of my head. Okay. I thought we were talking about implementing these prior to the quick build. That I'm not the case. So what, what would you need to move forward with this quicker? than the quick build project. If you gave us this direction this evening, to, we can pick those up. Uh, we can start the ordering process. I don't know what the lead times would be. It may ultimately sync up with the actual construction of the quick build. There may be, you know, again, I'm not a traffic engineer, but it may be that they would recommend actually putting them in, in conjunction with the new striping just to alert people that things are different. Um, so I don't know. There may be a recommendation from a traffic engineer who would say, I, I'm out, of my, I'm out of my depth on this one that, you know, putting it in a month ahead of time wouldn't be as smart as putting them in together. But we can order them um, if you guys give us that direction this evening and start that process. I'll, I'll motion to order that. We're not there yet. We're not there yet. No. Do you have any more questions, Council? Okay. Now we can take it out to the public. Any public comment on this item specifically? Yes, good evening. My name is still James Ewing Whitman. You know, I've been commuting in this county over the hill, across the hill for 25 years since 1996. You know, I can't believe how many people I almost see a day running stop signs right in front of me. When I was driving up SoCal, 
earlier in the week and crossing traffic was a man in a wheelchair going the wrong direction. And I, I think he was less than a hundred feet away from me before I even saw him. And I was like, what's going on? So the loss is tragic. I personally gave up riding motorcycles at the age of 22 after almost wrapping myself around the same telephone pole three times. I know I'm not the sharpest tool in the shed, but at least I gave that up 40 years ago almost. So we all kind of need to pay attention because there's a lot of distractions going on with driving. You know, you look at the quality of the lighting. This room is 2,700 Kelvin. That's actually quite pleasant. All the street lights, that's 5,000 Kelvin. That's a really sharp light. I don't know how many people are affected by people's headlights that are driving towards them. Sometimes too much light can actually be damaging. So it's fascinating. I could be wrong, but it's my understanding that you're going to maybe do a study that's costing $50,000 where you could order some equipment right now for $10,000 and someone could probably donate that amount of money to you guys. So it's, it's nice to hear some action from you ladies and gentlemen. I appreciate that. And who knows what's actually going to happen. But it's nice to be a witness to something small that's actually pretty big because what is the cost of a human life? So thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, that's fine. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Again, my name is Janet Edwards, and um, being a member of E&D TAC, we would like for you guys, before you do this quick build, to bring somebody in that's blind and have them describe what it is. And to make my point, I want to tell you that I have never been to this building before, and I came, like, on Tuesday to make sure I could find a parking place. And I wanted to also make sure that besides the front of the building, I could park somewhere else. And I tried to find where the parking is for um, the upper lot. I went up the sidewalk. There's no curb cut. It's very steep. It was very difficult. Fortunately, a staff member from the city of Capitola told me how to find the, the ramps and so forth to get to the upper lot. I would never have found it. If somebody hadn't told me. There's no sign down here that says, go this way. It may be important. We have lots of visitors. You need to tell people how to go places that aren't usual. So I, the way to do that is to go in the elevator. I went in the elevator with somebody. I'm not sure I could have reached the buttons because I can't turn around in that elevator. We got up there fine. There is no sign that says this way to go out if you had parked up there. There is not one handicap parking in that lot. You guys need to find people that have disabilities that can see these things that you guys don't see. And a blind person at an intersection is very important. They can't look people in the eyes and say, oh, they're going to move. I shouldn't move. And one of your pictures has this big pot that you're proposing to block part of the traffic. I'm terrified that they wouldn't see me next to that pot. So please have somebody who's blind come and talk to whoever's planning it. You can work through me. I can leave you my information. Our blind person, who's our chairman, is out getting a new seeing eye dog. So. Um, if you contact me, if she isn't back yet, I can find somebody for you. Please, please have somebody blind walk in my shoes or their shoes. Thank you. Can I give this to somebody? Yeah, Julia Germain. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anybody else wishing to speak on this item? Hello. I'm John from Strongtown Santa Cruz. We are a local urban planning and design org. Uh, 
very focused on public safety. So the police tell us that it's about education, enforcement, and engineering. These are the three E's, uh, and they're kind of right. It's about engineering. Design controls our behavior, and all design, whether it be for streets or for society, is self-enforcing, meaning people will do what we intend them to do and what we design our roads to do. Uh, signage is pretty meaningless. Those flashing lights are a nice idea, but humans will drive as fast as a road can be driven. Uh, it's just who we are. It's why we all violate the speed limit every day, even though we know that's the most dangerous thing we can do to our community. Uh, so speed is the issue we need to solve for. It's what kills folks. It's the cause of much of our traffic as well. Because while speed is great for highways, which are straight and have very few entrance and exits, our connector and residential streets and even our arterials, speed is the enemy of flow. And flow is what decreases congestion and reduces travel times. So we're redesigning the Jade Street Playground because we recognize that design is outdated because it prioritizes and has a bias towards the dominant user. It's not shared by all. Uh, our streets are in the same turducken. We designed them to only prioritize cars, and now they don't work for anyone as a result. The solution is traditional development. Uh, this is the method humans used for millennia until the car-centric suburban model took over after World War II. This is fun. Uh, so it's time to give people walking, rolling, and biking the same protection as people driving. Our streets should be shared by all users. And we don't need every street in town to be a highway. Uh, we don't want that. Capitola is our place. It is unlike any other place. And it's worth reinvesting in our community the way we used to. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Anyone else for this item? I don't see anybody. We can take it back to council um, for any follow-up questions or deliberation? Mm -hmm. um, if staff could uh, reach out to the RTC and see about getting um, some input from the Elderly and Disabled Advisory Committee on this project, I think that would be beneficial. Yeah? Yes. Okay. Sorry. Thank yes. you. Do we know their schedule? They meet once a month. Yeah. Okay. We can get it to you. I had actually a question too about um, the painting for the crosswalk. Is that is the crosswalk on the crossroads loop something that we would maintain? Okay. Um, and so, would in, in conjunction with the stop signs lighting up, would that be would painting the crosswalks be something that's possible? As like a, it is in our right of way, so we yes we can. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Samantha, um, since the loop is not on the agenda today, are we able to add that on in direction to staff this evening? Yes. Perfect. Um, go ahead, Joe. Yeah, we could definitely bring it back with our ad hoc committee to uh, the, our next meeting, the, the things that were ex ex expressed today. Mm -hmm. I just want to say that we uh, that we're, we're here at the council looking forward to getting something done because we know how important it is to everybody. So I just want to uh, let everybody know that it is really important to us. And, uh, it's great to be moving forward. Um, I'd like to request or, and if I need to make this in a motion, I know it only says direct staff, but um, if I need to proceed with the motion, please let me know that I'd like for staff to move forward with ordering as many as appropriate and flashy signs today that will go in conjunction with the, the quick build Additionally, to um, restripe the, um, you make me nervous when you you do that. Thank you. Um, restripe the Hill Street corridor that we heard earlier from our speaker and anything else, because I might be saying the wrong streets, but I think you, I, I'm alluding to there's just new striping necessary for that area. If you can please look into that. Um, does this need to be a motion or can I just direct staff this evening? It can be direction, but if it's direction, in which case you, would, you don't really need a motion, it just would be good to hear if the council. Well, and I think this is something we would like to see, not 
necessarily part of this timeline that we're referencing, but like ASAP. Yeah. yeah. Right. That was my intent. Right. Can I just add something to that? I'd be interested if we could put um, the reflective tape on the polls as well. We could add that to it if everybody's fine yeah, with that. I'm great with that. And thank you to our speaker for bringing that forward this evening. And if I've missed anything, um, please reach out to staff if I if I've missed anything in, in what was presented. Thank you. All right. Everyone's in consensus. Great. That's all we need. Good. Okay. Uh, I'm good. You need? Yes. Okay. I understand. Okay. Awesome. Thank you very much. Appreciate all the hard work. Okay. So item 8B, it's our Capital Wharf Enhancement Project. Also presented by Ms. Com, the recommended action tonight is to provide direction to staff regarding the re redesigned wharf entry gate. Additional fixtures and authorize approval of two artist contracts. Consider an allocation of additional funding for the CWIP project. Before we dive in, I just want to take a minute to thank everybody who's been involved in this effort. It's really been amazing to see the community come together. So many people putting in so much time to help our community and help our wharf. Um, it's really makes me proud to be part of Capitola. So I just wanted to kick that off, uh, make sure that everyone knew staff perspective this is really it's really awesome and we do have a large group of those members here this evening so <laughs> um, if there are any clarifying moments that are needed we may reach out to you thank you very much all right good evening again mayor and council members as uh, the mayor noted there are several items to consider here on this item so Feel free to ask questions. So what staff is looking for this evening, the goals of this presentation are to receive feedback on the design and furnishings of the CWEP project, approve the artist contracts as they have quite a long lead time, and to consider authorizing city funding for the design elements of the CWEP project. Next slide, please. Um, so just a little bit of background, the Wharf Resiliency and Public Access Project, that is really uh, a structural project Focus on the resiliency of our wharf to do some deferred maintenance, obviously storm damage repair from this January and some public access improvements, namely restroom facilities. Uh, we started construction on that in September and it is going very well. Um, in tandem with that, a group of very dedicated community members have um, started up the Capitola Wharf Enhancement Project. So this is an independent project from our public access project, it is funded by private donations. And really the purpose of this project was to provide new and upgraded amenities or jewelry to our uh, wharf project to really make this project be a better place for uh, public access and education. Next slide, please. So the concept development of the CWIP project started this spring. There was a small contract with the RM Design Group who held a community meeting in June at New Brighton Middle School. And then the council also approved an agreement with Wharf to Wharf to administer the funding uh, for the fundraising of this project. Uh, the conceptual approval came uh, to council in summer of 2023. There's an associated resolution with that that really outlined the final scope of this project and gave preliminary cost estimates. And then the projected fundraising of this project on the onset was $250,000. Um, so this is one of the outcomes of that effort with RRM. It really just kind of gave some visual depictions of some of the upgrades uh, considered for this project, benches, a fish station, some public art opportunities. So this is really where we started from in the scoping of particular elements for this project. Next slide, please. Um, this uh, table was included in your staff report. This is the table from the um, resolution, and that first column is the um, estimated funding from the uh, or estimated cost of the elements from the onset. The last uh, column there is our current estimate of these components that we're going to go into more detail on following slides. Slide, please. Um, so this image is a bit different from the image that was included in your agenda packet. I will also say that that prior image was also preliminarily presented to the Planning Commission last week as an unagendized uh, staff comment and also to the uh, Art and Cultural Commission this past uh, Tuesday. Um, there was a bit of miscommunication between staff and the CWEP group about the kind of final design of this entryway as uh, detailed in the staff memo that went out in the extra materials. Uh, so for complete clarification, we are moving forward 
with this preliminary design for uh, obviously pending council comments and uh, planning commission comments for the entryway. Um, two items that you can see on this rendering are the uh, tiles on the bottom part of the piers of the entryway, and then also a little harder to see on this depiction are a uh, fish in the, um, in the walkway of the wharf. Um, and those are both artist, um, artist commissions that we'll discuss on the next slides. Also important to note for this updated entryway, this would be a refabrication. Um, the old pillars, we can't just stick the old pillars on top of these new, nice, lovely art um, items. So doing this design would also require the refabrication of the entire entryway. Next slide, please. Um, so the proposed artist for the tiling work is Kathleen Crosetti. She is a very prominent artist in the community. She has done a lot of work in neighboring cities. This is an example of some of her beautiful work in Santa Cruz. Um, the work is proposed to be glass rather than tile because glass is more suitable for a marine environment. The total uh, proposed contract is $41,000 and that'd be both for those bases of those columns in that rendering and also an independent donor wall um, to recognize the donors of the CWEP project. Next slide, please. The other artist component of this project will be brawn features. So inlaid fish flush with the decking, which is kind of what is on the uh, right there, um, leading to informational panels, kind of like a scavenger hunt for um, interested parties. Uh, the, Artist proposed for this is Sean Monahan. He is up at UCSC, also a prominent artist in the community. And the proposed artist contract is valued at $27,000 for this work. Next slide, please. Um, some other amenities that have been identified for this project are updated lighting. Um, currently, there are three light posts that need to be replaced from the damage that occurred on the wharf over January. Uh, these lighting fixtures differ from the existing lighting fixtures and one that they're new. Uh, there's approximately 10. And then also that they would be um, situated on the decking of the wharf rather than the railing of the wharf as the current lighting is. Um, another amenity would be a viewing station. The proposed viewing station has two levels, one and one that's at ADA or also being able to use by children's height. Next slide, please. Uh, other fixtures proposed are new benches, tables, and trash receptacles. Uh, next slide, please. Um, other components, these all being included in that initial resolution as items funded by this project include a fist station. The uh, CWEP group has proposed to do this work with volunteer efforts and still estimate that $10,000 of fundraised funds would be sufficient for this project. Uh, the historical signage for the wharf is something that is still pending and has a potential for outside funding, but no funding has been identified for it as of yet. Next slide, please. Um, another item which was included in the resolution as an unfunded item is a life course storage facility, specifically for their jet skis. Uh, the CWEP group has indicated that they have donors who wanted to donate specifically to this element. Um, it's approximately $75,000 to implement. At this time, staff would really recommend delaying this project into a future time, not so much with the CWEP project of the ele elements we're considering this evening, just because the current conditions of the buildings are really unknown. We've done some preliminary investigations, but we don't have a full structural report on them yet because of the access issues. And also any kind of new building on the wharf would require extensive permits that have long lead times. Uh, next slide, please. Um, additional funding requests by CWEP include bicycle racks, which are proposed to be split between the city and CWEP at $5,000 um, each for approximately, I, I want to say, five new bicycle racks. And then also proposed are additional features, including those bronze fish um, on the right image there. They're kind of the little dots on the other side of the stop that would be coming from the wharf leading down to the Stockton Bridge. So fish leading you back to the wharf, and then also potential improvements at that intersection there at Wharf Road. Um, that little square there could be a pillar, it could be a sign, it would need to be identified as to what those improvements would be. Next slide, please. 
So in summation, the CBO group is requesting that the city allocate additional funding to this project in the amount of $250,000, um, specifically in the fabrication, not the artist components, but simply the refabrication of that entry gate, the additional fish, the additional bike racks, the wharf road entry, and the installation of all of the mostly furniture, the lighting, benches, trash cans, the more furniture components of the project. So the prices quoted in the staff report and then also referred to early in the presentation are really just the purchase price of these fixtures and not and, and delivery, but not the assembly coordination um, and then affixing them to the work structure. And that's estimated at about $125,000. Next slide, please. Um, so the fiscal impact of this project, again, the tar initial target for their fundraising goal, but see what fundraising goal was $250,000. They've at this point raised approximately $336,000 with more pledges pending. Um, there's pending funding for other items such as educational signage. Uh, staff has applied for a grant, is waiting to hear back about that grant for some other items to also go on the wharf. Uh, the phase two project, uh, had a budget of $8.9 million, and then in the state budget had it was allocated additional $500,000. And the initial bid for the project was 7.7. .7. Um, as you know, the Wharf Project's a very large project. It also included storm damage. Um, we did our best to assess everything before we started uh, the project. But in these type of projects, there are always change orders, no matter how good of a um, evaluation you did. So at this point, we're estimating the final cost of this project to be $8.2 million. Again, we haven't quite reached in the broken span, so there might be some more additional damage, and there's no real estimate at this time about any kind of rehabilitation expense on the buildings until we have a full workup of their damages as well. Um, so doing the math for you, that leaves about $1.2 million of unprogrammed funds namely $750,000 from the general fund and $450,000 a measure of funds that were budgeted for the resiliency project that we don't anticipate uh, being spent on it at this time. Next slide. Um, so there are multiple recommendations for the staff report um, that are on the screen there. Um, I'm happy to go over them one by one or answer any additional questions you may have. Thank you. Um, do we, anybody from CWIP wish to make any points on any of the things we touched on before we go to questions? Uh, <laughs> good evening and thank you very much for the opportunity. Um, first, I'd just like to recap um, just what um, the process that CWA has gone through and making sure we reached out to the community. Um, as Jessica highlighted, um, you know, uh, coming together, the community, we reached out for survey, you know, having community meetings and really came up with a prize list of things that I think were very important that the community laid out. And that's what we use for our fundraising goals. Um, as noted, you know, our goal was to raise approximately $250,000. And after we comprised the list and we started working uh, with the city on trying to standard what um, establish some standards of what that we should be fundraising towards um, we saw that that number was growing and we continued to reach out to the community which the community has been absolutely amazing on their support um, as noted the number that we gave out to the city was 336 I think tonight somewhere 342 we have some uh, pledges that have been made and we those aren't received yet but we really feel um, at the end of our uh, campaign will be over $400,000. Um, we plan on ending our campaign on January 15th, um, which is really a month ahead of schedule what we planned, just because we feel that we are successful in the items that we laid out. And um, so that was been great. I think it's really something to note is how the community has come together. You know, we received pledges of, um, you know, $25,000 on high side and all the way down to some small ones. I think the most thing that touched us was um, we received... Um, a piece of mail and we opened it up and it was a piece of stationery that had like an ocean on it and it had a little mermaid drawn and it says this mermaid appreciates what everybody's doing and it had a twenty dollar bill in cash. And I think that really, you know, kind of you know, kind of grounded all of us, you know, as much as we appreciate that twenty five thousand dollar check, you know, you open up and you see that somebody mailed you a twenty dollar bill and touched about it. It really encompassed what you know our community's all about. 
the city staff, the council, and the whole entire community. So it was just really important. So with those things, um, we, we look at what the vision was laid out that we used for fundraising uh, towards was very, I think, clear, concise, and um, it just ends up that I think it does it the capital away and completes the project at 100%. So we really appreciate your time and your support. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, Council, staff, Gail Ortiz. I'm here to answer any questions about our letter to you uh, yesterday and the addition to the agenda and just to bring up a couple points that we would like to make in public so that we keep our record straight. Having to do with the entry gate, well, let me just back up a little bit and say that every single member of our group is here tonight. And that represents the kind of dedication and the cohesiveness we've seen in this group. And all along we've been spurred by the public's ability to say yes time and again. I don't think Maybe we had one person say no to us, one person out of all this money. So it's been, it's been amazing. Um, entry gate. Uh, going back, we had a meeting with Jamie and Jessica, and in that meeting, Jamie said, you know, we just don't have the funds or the, or the staff time to work on this entry gate. Can you guys find a, a pro bono designer for us? Jerry said, I think I can find somebody. He found someone. And at that point, we thought that they were going to be working with the city. So we find out that in some ways they did work with the city, but maybe there are some uh, problems with this current design. And we just want everybody to know that we don't, we have no ownership of this sign. We're okay with the process that Jessica mentioned, which is taking it back to the planning commission and the council and going with maybe something that's a little bit more like um, what RRM came up with. Um, there is one slide here that was in your packet that showed, I think it showed the old entry with the new bathrooms. And I just wanted to let anybody who might have seen that slide know that it can't really look like that because the, old, the new entry is going to be wider. So those, even if we did put in those old columns, they, it really wouldn't look like that. So I wanted to make sure that you knew that. Just so you know, we're, you know, we're okay with whatever the design is. We don't have a problem with the, the new way of designing it. Um, having to do with the lighting, benches, tables, telescopes, um, and um, viewing stations, we had two members of our committee who are on, who work with municipalities in their business, work on the bid that you see uh, in our report. Um, we felt we got a really great deal on it. We got sort of a friend, friends, uh, bid on that, a friend-to-friend -friend bid on that, so we know it was less than what you would normally get. And we worry that if uh, the city puts it out to bid uh, for our contractor or anyone else, especially our contractor, that uh, in addition to maybe not getting that friends and friends discount, there might also be a 20% uh, uh, work order change on that. So we, we worry about that and we want to bring that up. I had a talk with Jamie this afternoon. He assured me that uh, since our campaign is closing on January 15th, if there are increased costs having to do with those installations, that the city will bear those costs. So I just wanted you to know that. Um, so let's see, I've got a couple of other things. Um, the lifeguard station, the lifeguard storage unit was originally in the unfunded. We would love to fund that. We have every intention of funding that, but we, we want to make sure that all of our funded items can be funded first at the rate that they come in at the time of purchase, just to make sure, you know, we don't we don't commit to something that we're not able to do, but we think we'll be able to do it. We would very much like to do that. If you guys agree with that, we would like to make sure that in a year's time, if that structure has not been built, that we bring this back to the council and we talk about whether we still have intention to do that. And if so, we can move that date forward. And if not, we can find other ways on the wharf. Since it's just been reopened, we probably have identified other things we need on the wharf. We can do those things. But I, we've found in the past that if we're holding this money for the library for years and years. And the further back we get from a project, the more people's memories fade. We don't really remember things, you know, so it gets sticky. So let's say that in a year's time, if that hasn't been built and we did have the money for it, that we bring it back and we... Um, 
make sure that that money gets spent for something in a timely manner because people that's hard-earned money thank you any questions do any of you have any questions about our um, communication with you yesterday great any Appreciate it. questions on that okay um, do we have any questions for Jessica um, Jessica in oh yeah we'll go to public comment in a second um, Jessica the funds let me get the right on the last slide you mentioned the um, consider allocating funds for extra components this is not in relation to CWEP's funding is that what the question is it's so consider allocating funds for extra components. This is above and beyond what CWEP is, um, projects are, is that correct? Yes and no, it's that $250,000 total that was on one of the slides, I believe also in your agenda packet. So it does include things that were considered unfunded, but then it also includes installation of all of the funded let, items. Yeah, let me ask it, ask it a different way. I'm, I'm thinking about the kiosks. Yes. And um, those are not, related to CWEP's projects. They're related to our general fund dollars on, but is this the time to ensure that the kiosks are included in this project, in the wharf project overall? Um, the kiosks the on the wharf, they're called kiosks, right? You know what I'm talking yes, about? Yes, the educational, yeah. um, yes. So we've applied for funding on that. We're expecting to hear back in the next few weeks of if that's been funded, but at this juncture, there it ha it's not funded. Okay, so is the, tonight the appropriate time to ensure that if that we do not get that funding, that we allocate dollars towards ensuring kiosks are put in on the wharf? So we expect to hear back. What's the timeline on hearing back on the NOAA grants? Her, the first couple weeks of January. First couple oh, weeks but of January. see, NOAA is for signage, not for the kiosks themselves. And that's next Tuesday. So with that, I'm not talking about signage. I'm, lit, I'm talking literally about the building, the kiosks themselves. Believe, yep. So that grant did include those elements. 60,000 yes. for the build, the build of the kiosks and the signs. Yes, that was all roped in together. Oh, okay. We're not asking for $60,000 worth of signs. We're asking for no. kiosks. <laughs> And okay, yes. um, so my second part of that question is if we don't find out on Tuesday while we're at that meeting <laughs> and we don't get the funding for it, when will be the opportunity to ask for those dollars? Should we ask for, should we provide direction tonight that we do that or do I need to wait until January's budget meeting? I think my recommendation would be to let's see where we end up with the grant and then we can either do it at the budget hearing or you could ask for an agenda item earlier. Okay, so when you ask the question to consider allocating funds for extra components, what are you talking about? The ones on the included direction in here. Table. The ones included in table three of the staff report. Thank you. Okay, I see what you're asking now. Okay, and those are all my questions, thank you. I had two questions. Uh, the first one is about the Marine Safety Lifeguard um, building. I just had a question if we could identify the location and, and have uh, electricity and other things that might be needed done while we do the wharf instead of waiting until we find uh, out where we're gonna put it later or something to that effect. Is there anything we can do with that? So without knowing the condition of the buildings, I would hesitate to do any more utility work in that area before we know the full scope of what we need to do. Okay. I was just thinking it might be easier while we're doing the build out to. to I will say, we sh oh, I'm sorry, that we should know the conditions of the building prior to the project being completed. Yeah. So there would be another opportunity to make that evaluation. Okay. Uh, secondly, would be uh, the bids that CWIP went out and got. The city doesn't need to go out and get other bids, correct? Because it's going to be paid through CWIP funds. Is that correct? 
So the structure of the contract with Wharf to Wharf, the fundraise funds go directly to the city, and then we need to follow our um, our purchasing ordinance to purchase those the, those items. And so since the value of those items are so high, we do have to get multiple bids. Now, it's very much the chance that we'll go get multiple bids, and there'll be much more than what we've been bid bid to assuming that those prices are still good for the city when the city requests the bids and that we can use them and everything can be fine, but we are required to get multiple bids for purchases of this size. When we get to that point, it's going to come back to us to all decide on. Correct? I, know. I think if you guys give authorization to allocate the 250 and I think we're good to go. We, we, our plan was to take the design furnishings to the planning commission this winter make sure that they're on board if they have any design tweaks and then we would be good to go without needing further council review the marine safety structure that that obviously would need to come back um i was just more curious about the lights uh, the, the benches the everything else that we're, we're planning on to do yeah i think at this point the staff's plan had been if we got council buy off on the general design style this evening and you appropriated the funding that it would happen. Okay. We can bring it back for, for additional review if you'd like though. So what if it came back? Cause you still need to go out to bid for those projects, right? So what if it comes back above the 250 that we agreed upon? Well, that's a good question. I think it comes back beyond the 250. The first thing we would do, number one is, is look for other project delivery methods. You know, director Khan talked a little bit about change ordering the project in with our current wharf contractor. There's obviously other ways we could do it. So we could try to pursue options to kind of reduce the overall cost. Um, second option would be ask the council for additional funding. Third option would be to scale things back. Um, I have a question about the wharf road entry pillar and the paver improvements. How far from where you come off of um, Stockton into where the start of the wharf begins, are we talking about making improvements? Are we gonna be repaving that entire road? Are we just doing pavers in the crosswalk and that's it? What What is the extent of those improvements? It would really just be the entryway. So right now there's the wooden sign. It would be some kind of upgrade to that. So probably just the pa walkway pavers and some kind of improved signage pillar, some other element to show this is where the wharf is, but it is not intended to do any kind of paving or concrete work. So I know quite a while back, and forgive me if this is like a little bit into the weeds, but I know quite a while back we were having discussions about like cobblestones or some kind of stamped concrete so that we're not doing that anymore. It's just not part of the CWEP discussion. The latter, right? It's not part of the CWEP discussion. Obviously, that road's not in great condition. Right. I'm not totally sure where it is on our uh, pavement management program, what year that would be in. Um, but when we do go to move to do that, that would be a consideration at that time. Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, about the gate, so when we're referring to the gate or this entryway, there is no physical gate associated with this, or is there? So not in that rendering. There is a gate. There was a gate before we removed it for this project there. The intent is still to have a gate, so when we need to close the wharf for safety purposes, we would have something to close. It's generally open. It is not on that rendering. But it is included in the? Yes, in the, in the cost, yes. Okay, I think that was all my questions, too. Okay, uh, public comment. Anybody wish to speak on this item? I just, I just need a clarification from Jessica. When we were at the Arts Commission meeting on Tuesday night, we had a different arch, and we had a huge conversation about that arch. And in the picture that you showed, that was more like the original uh, Capitola Wharf arch. And, is, and you said that it needed to be refabricated, and that's why we couldn't use it. Are we doing which name arch? Because <laughs> that was our confusion. That's my confusion. And go ahead. Yeah, thanks. So as outlined in the staff report and then in the memo that was after the probably uh, missed that. It had been released, there was some miscommunication between CWEP and staff about the rendering and the intention of the entryway. We do intend on moving forward with that rendering that was put up here right now, which is the one from RRM 
the archway of the old, of the existing um, pillars is more or less in disrepair. It does need to be refabricated just generally, even if we were to put it back. Um, so the intention is to refabricate that specific piece of metal. Yes. Okay, so that was the look. Okay, thank you. And then I would really hope the commission moves forward in uh, helping the C-Web people get all their things installed. I know you guys will, but I just wanted to say I'm there to support them and hope we can get that all accomplished. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, Council. Christine McBroom, part of the CWEP committee. I just want to highlight, um, I think no less than, each one of these members spent no less than five to 10 hours a week for the past year. Um, it was important to us because our community spoke and um, that our community spoke loud. And so it was an honor to work with every single one of these folks um, to provide and give our community what they're asking for. So I'm just encouraging you. This is our community. They've gotten behind this. We've gotten behind this. We've all worked countless hours. You know, Joe probably worked probably 15 hours a week trying to get those bids and begging people to get discounts and prices and things like that. Um, Jerry as well, at countless hours. Gail, fundraising. But um, Vicki with the marketing, Karin with the marketing, Carrie. And it's just really important to us because the community has come forth and surpassed the goal that we ever had place in place. So um, I think that speaks volumes. We wanted 250, we're knocking on the door at 400,000 with kind of some bids and things, I'm mean, our uh, pledges and things like that. So I think that speaks volumes. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, good evening, Council. First of all, I just want to uh, really thank this uh, committee here. This this group has done more for this community than uh, any uh, city staff or community members, any individual that I know of. And, and I, I think that does two things. One is um, they really represent the community, and I, I'm thankful that they're putting the hours that they're putting in to, to go out and do the research and, and make this uh, wharf what it should be. It's an icon. It was here before the city of Capitola was here, before Camp Capitola was here. Uh, and it really stands out as one of Capitola's uh, main um, uh, viewing things that come to people like to visit when they come here. The funding, I, I find it interesting. It says city asked for $250,000. Major F was, well, I would argue for a, a number of things. Primarily, it was for the wharf. And uh, I can remember seeing the, the Major F sign with the W-A-R and a large F uh, just to get people to, to support that. And it was overwhelmingly supportive uh, by our community. The money that this committee has been able to raise just goes on to show how much more this community wants to see that wharf done properly and rightly with all these enhancements. And it should be done that way. In addition, I would ask not only that you support that 250000 but the additional for the lifeguard station. At least put the funding there. I think the city can figure out the permitting process. Um, I watched them do some amazing things with our library that was over budget, and uh, they put a large uh, project on a small piece of property. So I'm sure the staff can overcome those type of obstacles. I just ask that you support the funding, including the lifeguard station, and, uh, and I want to just give a round for these people for what they've done. So thank you very much. Thank you. Any other speakers on this item? Hey guys. So I do have some thoughts on this item. Uh, the $750,000 from the general fund, let's not allocate it from that money. That's our tax dollars that will go right back into our budget, the way I understand it. And our budgets are not as robust as we think they are. Definitely fund the bike racks for $5,000. Uh, it's 10,000 total for the bike racks. Maybe just fund all of that from the city. The trail is going directly down Cliff Drive. We are going to see 10,000 bikes a day, they say, in high summer. And these will be electric bikes. These will be all these other bikes. And they will just drive right onto the wharf because there's no place to park your bike that's safe where you feel like you can leave it. You will just keep it with you. Uh, 
Yeah, I think that's all I got. They did crush it. Uh, my best modeling for them was $450,000, and that was with uh, a professional fundraiser, and they did this on their own, so they really crushed it. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. My name is, oops, I'm shorter than that. My name is Janet Romanowski, and I'm not one that usually comes before the council. I'm not on the committee. I don't know that I've been in here in years. Uh, but when I heard about this project, standing on the outside, thinking about all the good that this could do, the excitement of this group that got together, I got excited. I got really excited. I moved here to Santa Cruz 45 years ago. I graduated from UC Santa Cruz. Uh, 42 years ago, I became a real estate agent. So I'm a business person in the Capitola community. I work for David Ling Real Estate. And on January 6th, when I was sitting up in my office on 41st Avenue, and my brother called me from San Diego, just in tears. You know, the, the wharf, it's washed away. The, the, the village is inundated. I had no clue what was going on because I'd been on vacation. I was still feeling like I was on vacation. I got in my car, raced down Opal Cliffs, and got to that area above the wharf where you look down at the wharf. And I don't know who, if any of you were there, but it was a very eerie feeling to be standing there in this odd silence. People kind of gasping at what was going on. The icon of our community. And you're watching wave after wave, just pounding the wharf, destroying what, what we had. And there's nothing we could do. We stood there helpless. We go 11 months and 14 days from that point, and I gotta say, we're, we're awesome that we could do this in less than a year. I have to say, I'm pretty amazed at what's going on. But now I'm gathered with a different group of people, and we're not talking about sadness. We're not talking about loss. What I see here is we're talking about possibility. We're talking about gain. It's a whole different conversation. As a real estate agent, um, as a business owner, when you have a new client you're working with, you want to make your best impression. And I'll tell you what my best first impression is. I go park him in the David Ling parking lot. We walk across the Stockton Bridge, maybe get a cup of coffee at Mr. Toots. By the time they're out on the wharf, they're sitting on the bench, or they've got their hands up on the railing or whatever, they're in love with Capitola the same way I am. The wharf is iconic. It is, maybe aside from Gail's Bakery and JoJo, probably the most recognizable part of Capitola. And I sincerely hope what's coming before you, I'm not on the committee, but I'm one of the people that wanted to put my money in because I am committed to making this happen and really making this a, I'll call it world class, but don't take that as being, we're not giving up our Santa Cruz values, just something that's really special. And I commend this committee. They have a lot of people that got behind it and I am happy to be supporting it. And I hope you'll be doing the same. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, good evening to you all. I'm Dave Payton, a community volunteer, and tonight I'm wearing my uh, historical museum hat. And uh, I want to comment about the, the nature of this. Um, we are looking at something that's generational and historical. And I don't know if anybody in this room is going to end up being a Heen or a Rispin. Well, maybe Gail might. Uh, so, but it's going to take all of us to do this. And we know the funding for the, the museum's um, piece of the action here, the, the panel, the educational panel, and the, um, the timeline for the, the wharf itself is underfunded. And we're making every effort we can to, to fund that and to take advantage of our wonderful curator who's here tonight, Deb Rosterman, who's willing to put all of this information together and has just a, a wealth of that. But what we're doing right now in a, in a very small way, and we heard Jerry talk about how there's checks for $25,000 and those special envelopes that'll have 20 in it. Well, we have a way to spend a little bit of money and to celebrate the, the wharf. And we have a calendar. We have 50 copies of this, and we're asking a donation, that's how the museum does it, um, of, of 15 to $20, whatever you can afford. And it has pictures in it of, of the wharf in the past, the damage in the wharf. And if any of you have come out to the, the festivals that we've had over the last handful of months, you've seen the table that the museum's had out there with, with photos and pictures and, and illustrations of all the, the years and years of the wharf and to see the damage in, that it's had all these years and the, the trials and tribulations that the wharf has faced. Well, we have a calendar 
that we're selling out of the museum, and we hope that you'll take advantage of that. I sold one already today, so tonight, so uh, thank you, uh, TJ and Connie, for that. So anyway, uh, we've got this, and we're working toward that goal to have what we need out on the wharf little by little. I thank you very much. Thank you. Anybody else wish to come up? I don't think so. We can come back to council. Um, any deliberation or clarification? Some comments. Comments. Um, okay, so I will start uh, first and foremost by thanking all of the CWEP volunteers, all the community members um, that donated. We are truly indebted to you for the time and effort that you've put into this. Um, everyone who has donated the staff for all the effort that you have put into the collaboration in this process. Um, this is just, it's really exciting. It's, it's truly um, a testament to uh, collaboration within the community. And, um, you know, you guys said you were going to do something, and not only did you do it, but you exceeded what you said you were going to do, and that's incredibly impressive. Um, so for the sake of discussion, I want to go ahead and make a motion to allocate the 250000 and set aside the funding for a future uh, lifeguard tower as well. Yeah, I'd like to second that. But before that, I have some comments also. It is great to uh, be sitting here before everybody and, and uh, see what you guys have done. It's truly awesome. Um, I was there that day when it happened, and it was, it was shocking. And, and, and to hear little kids talking about it and older people talking about it, it's... Uh, it's, it was amazing and remarkable, but to, to see where we're at today is great. And I don't see him here today, but someone who's been working on this also is one of our prior mayors, uh, Dennis. Uh, he did a lot of work um, working on the front of the wharf and doing some renditions for us. And uh, everybody, it's just amazing that everybody's come together, done such a great job working on all these things. And uh, it's easy, easy for us to... Um, to say we need to do this for the right reasons. So I'll second that. Um, I just have some comments. I am in. Yes, I agree with, with all of you. Yes, you are all capitalist heroes, and we are in endless, endless debt to, to all of you. So thank you. I will tell you that for the rest of my life, my kids' life, we're we're so lucky to be here, and thank you so much. Um, I have some comments about the entryway. <laughs> um, so. Just that um, it's going to go back to planning commission, um, which I'm really happy that they'll get another opportunity to give input on this. And I lean heavily on my planning commissioner to, to provide input as well. Um, I think it'll be important that we think about less stucco and more mosaics uh, and ironwork on um, those pillars. There's a lot of opportunity on the left and right side for um, like as donor walls, like the donor tiles and even highlighting CWEP, if you create some sort of mosaic to say thank you to yourselves and kind of commemorate that, just a, a little hint there. Um, I think that there's opportunity to even raise the right side of the wall a little bit to even allow for more donor space um, there. Um, so I have a sketch of some ideas that I'm happy to share with you. <laughs> Um, thanks to my planning commissioner also giving me ideas. So that doesn't come from my brain, no. <laughs> They're like, you back? What? Um, but, oh, I mean, the takeaway here is I'm in full support of, of, um, of the 250000 And, Gail, thank you for bringing up coming back in a year. I think that makes perfect sense. A year is not that long away um, regarding the uh, lifeguard, um, life, lifeguard thing, storage. Um, and other things, because there's just so much opportunity. And I will be at the Monterey Sanctuary Foundation meeting on Tuesday to help support us getting um, those educational kiosks. So, um, yes, but again, thank you. Just echoing what everybody else said, I really appreciate it and really looking forward to this project coming to fruition in the coming year. Well, I will too. Um, what a year. Um, probably the worst thing that could have ever happened the first week of my term as mayor. But look at you guys making me look good all of a sudden, <laughs> a year later. Just kidding. That's all for you guys. I cannot, cannot thank you enough. Um, the whole group, all the donors, our city staff, um, I think a lot has been touched on with the fact that young, old, 
visitors, residents, this affected so many people and it's been talked about by everybody. And um, so just not enough gratitude can be put out there for, for all of your efforts. And it's been really great being able to like see you guys more and work more with you guys. And um, I just think it also s sort of has brought people together after a time where not a lot of people were meeting up and doing meet and greets or fundraising efforts were really hard because everybody was kind of behind a computer screen. You guys have been out there in these streets. And so um, I am definitely in 1,000% support. So we do have a motion and a second. Let's go. Roll call. Just kidding. What? I just wanted to uh, verify that the motion included the artist contracts. And yeah. then also the other item that was for um, council consideration was amending our contract with Cushman. Yes, all of that. Oh. Yeah. Do you want to you read it off? Yeah, I'll read it. Okay. All right, so I will make a motion to authorize contracts with artists, the artists, uh, consider <laughs> allocating, uh, allocate the additional 250,000 uh, from city funds, authorize an amendment to the Cushman contract, and direct staff to hold 75,000 for the lifeguard facility. Does that cover everything? Okay. Roll call, let's go. Second that again. There we go. Councilmember Brooks? Aye. Councilmember Clark? Aye. Councilmember Peterson? Aye. Vice Mayor Brown? Aye. And Mayor Kaiser? Aye. Passes unanimously. Thanks again, everybody. All right. This will take us down to item 8C, our strategic planning contract. Oh. <laughs> it's not as fun as the wharf. I know. I know. I'm just going to keep talking. <laughs> Okay, the recommended action is to authorize the city manager to execute a professional service. I said it. Who's who's. Who's speaking on this? Okay. Oh, don't be sorry. <laughs> she was barrel rolled. Crowd serve. <laughs> Move it to the front. <laughs> it's my mom's name, so I'm like, it's okay. Thank you. I'll wait. No, it's okay. I we can take a little break. No, we. I mean, we want to go through this. Love it. <laughs> Not go. Just. I mean, we want to get through it. Yeah. Yeah. I. I have a hard time. I'm Jewish. <laughs> All right, Chloe, feel free to start whenever you're ready. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mayor and Council. So we'll be talking, this is going to be quick, uh, strategic planning. Now, you may recall on our next slide here, I don't have this one, thank you, <laughs> memorized quite well, sorry. So you'll remember uh, some background for you. Earlier in this year, uh, Council did identify during your strategic planning and um, the, excuse me, you identified strategic planning as a goal during your budget goal priorities session, and then did follow up by allocating $50,000 to such a project in this fiscal year's budget. And earlier in September, you did reaffirm our approach and this as an important project. So in uh, November, we published a request for proposals for strategic planning development for the city of Capitola and received seven um, proposals that were reviewed by staff and kind of whittled down to the top three. Uh, next slide, please. And um, mostly because this is a collaborative project that council will be very much involved in, we thought we should probably have you involved in selection 
of who will be working with council and staff. So two members of council independently volunteered to sit on our interview panel. Thank you so much for your time, uh, council members Brooks and Peterson. We did interview representatives um, associated with the top three proposals and came to a conclusion based on their experience, um, a very clear dedication to community outreach and their overall approach to recommend Barry Dunn as the consultant to conduct our strategic planning. And this next slide will have a little bit more on what does this project look like. Uh, there's three very distinct phases. This is kind of a lot of information, but basically um, Barry Dunn is gonna do a great job and I'm very excited <laughs> about it. But um, mostly in phase two and three, council will be involved. Uh, staff is going to be involved right away, You know, developing a work plan, looking at a timeline. Uh, the team with Barry Dunn will do a SWOT analysis. They're going to use all of the information already available in you know, currently published plans, like our housing element, other documents, um, to kind of really know everything there is to know already, and then move into speaking with you as individuals, conducting workshops, and helping facilitate visioning sessions, and of course, working with staff as well. So this is about a give or take a six month process. We're excited to, if you do direct um, our, our city manager to enter a contract, get started in the new year, which brings us right on schedule to hopefully be wrapping up with you adopting a final plan near the close of the fiscal year. So I'm available for questions. The official recommendation is that you do authorize the city manager to execute the agreement with Barry Dunn in an amount not to exceed the $50,000 towards the development of a five-year strategic plan. Thank you. Thank you. Questions? Yeah. I just have one quick question. So I don't have a problem with the contract, um, but I, I don't know if it was in here, but I wasn't able to find it. When we had the discussion about the strategic plan, I had requested that we have kind of like an operational plan within the strategic plan that can be updated every two years as new council members come on. Is that part of the scope of work? So yes and no, that, that was discussed with the proposed um, contractors, and there are a number of ways we can kind of achieve that, but the, a lot of the communication in the interview was about how is this a living document, how can this be updated and changed. I know that was extremely important to council, so we did talk about that, and there's a couple different ways that um, this specific firm can help us with operational and implementation. Okay, so this is just the contract, but later on down the road, we can kind of sort through how often this will be updated and so it doesn't just become a like whenever someone decides something new it is reopened it can be like a in a regular cadence we can decide that at another time yes okay cool thank you the question um so i just thought it was going to be uh, more general not specifically only focusing on the five years is it not going to incorporate some longer term planning as well so my understanding of the scope of work is that there's going to be two visioning sessions and the first is much higher level and looking at your long-term vision and goals, which could be, you know, 50 years, for example. But the actual plan and the published document will be usable, workable, a five-year plan. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. and, and the other key is, is that this is going to be your document. So... As we work through the process, you know, if at the end of the day it's like, look, well, let's structure it like this, let's have our five-year targets and then our 10-year, that's all within your control. We can work through that, through the process, through the workshops, through the interviews, the different sorts of steps that we'll go through the development of the strategic plan. Perfect. Thank you. Public comment on this item. Seeing none. Back to council. The motion yes all right i'll move to authorize the city manager to execute a professional services agreement in an amount not to exceed fifty thousand dollars to develop a five-year city of capitola strategic plan i'll second that great we have a motion and a second maybe we have a roll call please councilmember brooks aye councilmember clark aye councilmember peterson aye vice mayor brown aye mayor kaiser Hi, passes unanimously. Thank you. Takes us to our last item of the year. Oh my God. Okay. 8D, City Council Reorganization. It is now time to nominate and elect a new mayor and a new vice mayor. Is there a motion? 
to elect. Oh, any public comment on this? Any objection? Just kidding. <laughs> All right. Uh, are we doing council comment? Yeah. I'd like to thank you, Margo, um, Mayor, for uh, a great year. Uh, I learned a lot, and it was um, fun to watch you do some amazing things. So thank you. Oh, thank you. Appreciate it. I'd like to comment as well. Uh, it has been absolutely an honor to serve as vice mayor to you this year. I know that you were, don't laugh. You, know what I mean? <laughs> um, you have brought a sense of um, just joy and, and um, liveliness to this that I think was really needed, especially this year, because it was really tough. Um, and I know that you were thrown into some really hard things at the very beginning, and you led us through it with uh, grace and skill and grit and, like, really um, were just a phenomenal leader during this really tough year. Don't do that. <laughs> um, and so just thank you. We, we are very lucky that, that you were the person in this position this year. Staff also wanted to say thank you to Mayor Kaiser for her term as mayor. And we have a small token of appreciation we wanted to present. Thank you. That's gorgeous. Yeah. No way. Oh my God, that's so cool. Thank you. Wow. Um, well, I never thought I would be doing this, <laughs> but um, thanks for making me cry. And um, just thank you, and thank you, staff, and thank you, council. Like, I wouldn't be here without you guys and without this city. And while it was, like, a really tough year, it was really awesome, and I learned so much and have such a better understanding of how things work and um, what this city is really made of. And a lot of that was shown tonight by a lot of great people and throughout this year. And... I have felt super supported. Um, I know my first step is to self-deprecate and pretend like I can't do something, but um, it has felt really good to be here with you guys. And um, and I'm excited to see what the next year is and for the next mayor, what is going to happen for them. Hopefully nothing too gnarly, but, you know, <laughs> I'm not, I'm not going to manifest anything. But, um, yeah, it's been real. Like, thank you guys. I Everybody that's here has done something for me, with me, by us, and it's just been awesome. So, thank you. Mayor Kaiser, thank you so much um, for being by my side this year mm -hmm. um, and the cities. I am so grateful for your interest and your time and your commitment to, to not just the community, but to me and supporting us on the dais and to be able to walk into a room twice a month with the group and feel like this is a safe place where we can all be heard and get things done. It's because of your leadership and really we're so honored to have had you this last year. So I adore you. You're not going anywhere. <laughs> um, I appreciate everything you've done. Uh, with that, I'd like to nominate Kristen Brown to be our next mayor. I'm going to second that. Because <laughs> I can. So we have a first and a second to nominate Ms. Brown as our new mayor. May we have a roll call. Councilmember Brooks. Aye. Councilmember Clark. Aye. Councilmember Peterson. Aye. Vice Mayor Brown. Aye. And Mayor Kaiser. No longer, but aye. <laughs> and next order of business would be to nominate um, our Vice Mayor. Do we have a motion? I will move uh, Councilmember Brooks as Vice Mayor for the coming year. I will also second that. We have a first and a second. Councilmember Brooks. Aye. Councilmember Clark. Aye. Councilmember Peterson. Aye. Councilmember Kaiser. Aye. And Mayor Brown. Aye. That also passes unanimously. Congratulations, ladies. 
on our next year. I have no doubt of either of you being in those positions. There you go. <laughs> You're the mayor. <laughs> Wow, this feels like a really important responsibility tonight. <laughs> uh, meeting adjourned. <laughs> <Woo>! <laughs>